Um, my name is Gina Bowers Miller. I'm from Harrisburg Area Community College in Pennsylvania, near Hershey, Hershey Chocolate. Um, and I'm presenting today on using mobile technology in the classroom and beyond. And this is based on my research, sort of, uh, experience teaching in a class um, on using mobile technology. And, and I have to say a thank you to Cengage and a thank you to some of our wonderful authors that have presented because um, if it hadn't been for them and coming to conferences like this, I would never have created this class. So it, my, my initiative really came out of coming to conferences like this. I was pretty inspired to do that. So um, what you see down here, uh, the document eventually, I believe Sengage is going to be putting it out on their website, but if you want to see this presentation, you can get to it through my Dropbox or through SlideShare. Uh, the Dropbox links is this long, so I shortened it. Um, so that's there, and I also have it at the end. So I have about 34 slides. I'm going to try to get through those today. Um, if you can't read some of the links, which you probably won't be able to, please feel free to download it. Um, I have my cards. I'll leave my cards here. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those afterwards as well. Um, so this is about this mobile technology class that, um, that I created. I've been teaching it now for about three semesters. Uh, we now have made it a full-blown course at the college. Initially it was like a temporary course. Um, now we've made it a full-blown course at the college. Um, and some of the things that I'm going to talk about today are the apps and, and some of the things that we do with those. These are some of the assignments that we have. Uh, show you our course wiki that it's one of the students created, some group projects, some of the favorites that we've, uh, we've discovered, and then talk a little bit about mobile devices, a survey that I've done and, and of sort of uh, student usage and how they use their mobile devices, which may or may not surprise you, we'll see, um, and some of the lessons learned from, from teaching the class. Okay. Um, uh, this is the class that this sort of, was sort of our description initially um, to try to get students interested in it. These were some of the things that we were going to cover. And in the beginning, um, we looked at collaborative learning spaces like Google Docs. We looked at SkyDrive. We looked at Zoho. Those were some of the initial assignments that we did a couple of years ago. Um, and now we're, we're kind of moving on to something a little different. And I will say that every semester, it's a little bit different in terms of the projects that I have. So the results aren't the same every year. Okay. As it stands right now, there are two major projects in the course, and that's what I want to focus on today. The major group project, students uh, divide up into groups of maybe three or four people, they have to look at three different mobile devices, or use three different mobile devices, and at least three different apps. Um, and what I want them to do is to you know, pick a project where they can create something, like create a wiki, or create um, a photo slide share program or something using different apps and different devices. Um, knowing full well that not every app will work on every device, and some devices are really a pain in the neck to work with to create you know, PowerPoint on your phone. But I purposely wanted them to do that so that they could see maybe it's possible, maybe it's not, but just to open their eyes because many of them they use their phones for texting and they don't use tablets so much, so this is just sort of a way to get them to try some things. Um, so I have some samples of that. Some of the projects this year, they uh, try to come up with an organization, a calendar system. Um, we have some music streaming, uh, a wiki I'm going to show you. And then the other, pro the other main project, it's called a classroom demo. And what this is, is for, for every chapter that we have in the book, a student would pick a week. And then they go out and get an application, and preferably they pick one they don't know, because that's the idea is to expand their horizons and try something new. And they'll, they'll test it out. And they can do this on the laptop, on the desktop, they don't have to use a mobile device, but then they learn it and they come in and teach it to the class. And, and that's been a lot of fun um, because the students get pretty excited about it. Some things are just, some of the apps out there, they're just not that great. And it, their presentation, they feel bad because it's not, you know, maybe not the, the best presentation, but that's reality. And that's what we find when we download apps. Some of them work, some of them don't. But we've, we've come across some really cool things too. Um, this uh, screenshot here is actually a picture of a website that one of my students made. It's a wiki. Um, when we first started teaching the course, we did it in WebCT, and I had a whole lot of links and, and things in the class, and the students had said, I really want to have access to that, and they knew we were switching and going to D2L. 
So the student decided, I'm going to take everything that you have in your WebCT course that I can copy, and I'm going to put it on a wiki. Um, and they, the, actually that was their project for the year, was to try a couple different wikis out. And so the next couple of slides are pictures of the wiki that they initially created using some of the stuff that I had on WebCT, as well as things that they added um, themselves or other classmates added. Okay. Um, in the past, when I've done the presentation, um, I, you know, I always like to start out with one of those flashy videos that gets your attention and you know, kind of surprises us about how students are using technology and not paying attention and all those things. And this was a really good video, and I would love to show it to you, but this is what happens when I click on it now. Um, it's no longer available. Okay? And, and trust me, I've tried every way to try to fool them and think I'm in a different country. It doesn't work. So I left the link on there in the event that you go to a country that allows you to download the video, you can see it. Um, but this was also a lesson. Here today, gone tomorrow, you know, you can't complain when things are free and they're, they're just not always there. Um, it really was a good video, though. Okay. Um, this is, again, another shot of a wiki. These are some of the articles. I'm kind of compulsive about reading different magazines, and when I come across an article, oh, I really want to share that with my students. So I go out, I copy it, I scan it, I PDF it, and put it into the class, and then I hope that they would maybe read it. Um, and so these are just some of the articles that were out there. Okay, and they did read some of them. Okay. Some class links, again, these are things that I had taken um, from the WebCT class and just added them in. There are probably hundreds of links uh, when you actually go out to the wiki to see. There's just a ton of stuff. Um, there's so many things out there to use. Okay, lectures, I typically record my lectures. I teach online, I teach blended, and so a lot of times I would record my lecture, post it out um, on, the, on the website for the class, and you know sometimes students would listen, sometimes they wouldn't. Um, I will say though that these are not really edited, so if there's any like bad jokes or any things for my administration, just don't tell anybody because um, I didn't really edit them. And that's why we have a big push at our at our school to do iTunes U. And I, I didn't want to put any of mine on iTunes U because I know the president would be listening to those there. So this was sort of it's contained in my own class, and nobody really knows about this site. So I'll keep my secret. Uh, classroom demo. When the students were done doing their demo, uh, part of their job is to go out onto the wiki and just post a little bit about what their demo was, what the software would do, you know, what it was for, and to put a link out there for us. Okay? And these are some of the ones that they have done um, and had a good time with it. Okay? Some of the group projects. Um, this is uh, the one from uh, a couple years ago that actually did this site. We did the, the wikis and the blogs for class to see. And part of what prompted this is we were leaving WebCT, we were going to D2L, and neither system is perfect. And so I'm thinking, I'm always looking for ways around things. Um, and so I thought, well, maybe could we just use a wiki and not use these other content management systems? So they were going to try to see what they could find. You know, could, could we do that? Um, what they created, I don't know, would, would really be a standalone course, but certainly had a lot of good information, and uh, it, it's, it's been very valuable. Um, music streaming, you know, students like to listen to their music, so that was a big one. Uh, podcast aggregators, that was another one that they did a few years ago, um, and those are some of the links for that. They also needed to put a video up and to show their presentation, put a link to their presentation or upload it to the wiki. Um, some of the just class links, again, we broke them down into different categories, um, educational, and there's a lot more categories out there, but this is just an example of some of them. Okay, mobile devices and education. I'm trying to tie this into education somehow. Um, part of what prompted this is our dean had written a grant and uh, had gotten iPads for us. And so, you know, my first year I was trying to show that the iPad was just the next best thing to slice bread, and it was wonderful, and we should all use them in our classes. And, and so we were trying to put a lot of educational stuff in there. Um, and, and iPads are wonderful, but when you're sitting in a classroom with computers already, the iPads aren't nearly as great as if you were sitting in a classroom without computers. So it was kind of like comparing apples and oranges. Um, so they, they have their purpose. But I still really appreciate the fact you gotta find that. So that's good. It's evolving content. Like I said, every semester I'm doing something a little bit different. Um, and so the last semester that I did it, I'm looking at the projects and saying, okay, I want the project to be 
something useful, meaning something that they could use, something an employer could use, maybe something they could use at school or share with their, their classmates. Um, I wanted them to test things that worked on multiple platforms. Hopefully they would work on multiple platforms, not necessarily. Um, I wanted them to create something with their project and then show that to us at the end. That was actually their final project, was to show what they had done and uh, give a demonstration. I asked them, how would you rate it? You know, is it good? Would you use it? And, you know, and for most apps that are out there, there's you know, hundreds of apps that will do the same thing, approximately. And so I wanted them to compare some of those and say, well, yeah, this one does work, this one doesn't, this one works with this device, this one works with this device, and just to explore. And that's kind of what they did. Um, and then, again, asking them, would you use it? And if they said no, you know, okay, they, they didn't get a bad grade for that, that was their honest opinion, they wouldn't. But if they said yes, I felt really good that they, they learned something, and they were going to carry something forward, and they, you know, they had something to take with them. That was a good feeling. Um, this year, some of the projects that we use this year, uh, one group decided to do news aggregators, and they looked at Zeit, Pulse, Flipboard, and Google Reader, and that was uh, kind of what they were looking at with various devices. Um, another group was looking at slideshows and presentations, and, and they tried different ones, um, Smilebox, Animoto, and Wow Slider. Um, and both of the groups, they, there were likes and dislikes depending upon what device. Um, I know that the photo group had a lot of problems with the droids. They just they couldn't get certain apps to work with that. Um, <clears throat> another group decided to do one on organization. One thing that I hear time and time again, students say, I don't know how to keep up with my work. I don't know when things are due. I use a calendar, but they don't. So, you know, I thought, okay, well, maybe we can come up with some kind of really cool app that, that students would maybe use to keep track of all their assignments, and it would be helpful. So this particular group said, you know, great, we'll, we'll tackle that. They looked at Get It Done, um, To Do Me, G Tasks, and Tasks Plus, and basically they didn't like any of them. Um, so, you know, I think that students maybe just need to go back to the days of the calendar, get the syllabus out, look at the dates, put it on their, their Google Calendar or their phone or something. Um, but, but that's kind of what they looked at, and, and they felt that, again, it didn't really work. Um, and one of them, one of these projects, I think it might have been G Tasks, a week before they were ready to present it, you just couldn't even use it anymore. So, they're like, oh, we're going to have three apps, what are we going to do? Okay, some other ones, um, if this and that. Anybody ever use that? Yeah, it's kind of neat. It's kind of neat. You, you, it's sort of like a little macro. You say, for example, if I take a, a picture, um, then I want it to automatically, like I take a picture on my phone, I want it to automatically be posted to Twitter. Or if I um, say I want to buy something from Craigslist, you put your search in. I want to buy a scooter that costs this much money in Harrisburg, PA, and when, when there's a match out there for that, I want you to send me an email. Or I want you to post it on my Facebook. And so you set up these automated tasks, and there's a, a list of them to choose from, um, and they call them recipes. So that's a lot of fun. The students had a lot of fun just kind of creating that. Um, and, you know, conceivably that could save you some time. I wouldn't have to be looking through Craigslist when I was sh scooter shopping. It would just tell me. I like that. Um, cozy Organizer, this was a presentation a student did about, uh, they were trying to organize their family. And so they installed it on various devices and then they were using that. Um, and moderately happy with that. Um, one guy was looking at different apps to help with fitness and weight loss and things like that, and he used an app called Lose It. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of that. It's a very, very nice app. It's free. And I will say that most of the things that we did in the class are free. My intent was never for the students to have to buy anything. I really wanted them to focus on free. I like free, so I was pushing the free stuff. Um, so Lose It is free. You can sync it with your phones and different devices, and, and you can put in like before you go to eat something, you put in, I want to have you know, eat a sandwich or I want this candy bar. It'll tell you how many calories and, and uh, the uh, calcium content and all kinds of stuff. So, you know, I should or shouldn't eat that. Um, so that was another one that was pretty cool. Uh, Video was another wiki, um, and that one was interesting. Uh, MindMeister is a mind mapping tool, and you can use that for different things. Um, you can use it for note taking, you can use it for just brainstorming, you can use it for class, 
Um, I know here, pearl trees. One of the, one of the other professors would use pearl trees and would just post a, a pearl tree out there and the students were coming into class, they would go out and add pearls that were websites related to whatever topic they were covering that day. Or maybe they did that as a homework assignment. Um, it's just a different way of looking at things. You know, students are just not very linear anymore. They like the color, they like, you know, things all over. Um, and so that was kind of neat. Okay, zombie survival. What does this have to do with business? Nothing. This group was really excited about the project, so I thought, hmm, okay. So they set out to do zombie survival. And I don't know, is anybody in here in the zombies? It's a, it's a whole movement now, okay? We have stores and rural, you know, and near Harrisburg, we have stores where you can go and buy your materials for the zombie apocalypse. You can be ready. I mean, literally, physical stores. Um, so they set out to see what they could find. Um, and essentially what this does is it prepares you for a disaster. So you might tell yourself you're preparing for the next zombie apocalypse, but you're really preparing for the next Hurricane Sandy. Okay? Um, and they found some fascinating things. Um, the one on the bottom here um, is actually a game that you can put on your iPad or your iPhone. It's called Zombie Run. And I guess this is for people that maybe don't want to run and they need some incentive to run. So you pull this up on your phone and if there's a zombie nearby, you gotta run away from the zombie. And then you run a little bit more and they tell you where the zombies are and you have to run away from the zombies. From an outsider looking in, that might look very strange. But um, it, it looked like a lot of fun. That particular app you did have to pay for. Um, we put it on my iPad. Um, and I didn't really get a chance to play. I'm not really a runner, so I didn't use it. But it did sound like fun. Um, zombie survival kits. The, the one guy in the group, he was so into this that he downloaded some of these survival kits. And, and I think he's been doing it for a little while. It wasn't just for this class. He actually took some of these kits and he went out into the woods to see if he could live on these kits and what they said, you know, this is what you can eat, this is how you have to start a fire. Know, don't eat this berry, but you can eat this meat. And he actually lived like I think, for a weekend using one of these things. So I had to give the guy extra credit. He really he put the time in. I don't know if he had the run app with him, because then it might have been a little scary out there, you know, knowing that there were zombies all around. Um, but this particular group, they decided they were going to actually create a website. So all the other groups, I said they could create a presentation, could not be PowerPoint. Could not be PowerPoint. So I, you know, I got Prezi, I got SlideShare, um, various and sundry things. This group, they were web majors. They decided they would make a website. Okay. Um, and I don't know if you can see the top corner. It says, uh, no matter if you have a PC, an iPhone, or Android, there are apps to help you survive the end of the world. And then they break it down to the different categories. And you can just look for PC apps. You can just look for the iOS apps. You can just look for Android apps. And it's pretty organized. They have it broken down fairly well. Types of zombies, I had no idea. There are types of zombies, and there are certain ways to behave based on if you have, uh, you know, the walker, the runner, or the mutant coming after you, and they explain that. Uh, so they you can be more educated on zombies as well. Um, some other things that we did, photo collage, and I've seen these here uh, today, a couple folks have done these, this was in Wordle. Um, this is a lot of fun to do, um, I'm not sure if it's educational or not really, but it is kind of fun, it's visual, it's, it's something different. Um, I actually used this particular one to uh, put on a poster when I was advertising my class. Uh, you know, trying to do something different to get students' attention, so I created this and we put posters around and you know, hopefully that would uh, get their attention and they would you know, take the class. Um, and it did, it helped. Okay. You could use it as a study guide, you could use it as something that had like, all the key words that you needed to study. Um, but it's, it's creative, it's not linear again, it's just something more visual, it's something different. Okay. Uh, another one was organizing your photos. Um, and you can organize those, and this one, if you can see, it says uh, 2013. Um, there was one on this website, it was like Mickey Mouse, and there wasn't anything particular for San Diego, um, but you can do it however you want. Uh, 
Um, you can make it into a design, you can just you know, make it into just a blob, and you can have however many pictures you want, increase them, or you know, make the pictures spread out more. Um, just a fun way to show your, your pictures, okay, if you don't want to use Facebook. Okay. Some of the articles, and, and again, changing wiki. If you notice, it looks a little different now. Um, one thing that uh, we discovered this semester, you know, a wiki essentially is designed as something that you can quickly make a change to it, and that it can, can be collaborative. You can use a wiki as a group project. Each team member can add files and, and you know, make changes. Usually wikis will track the changes, so you can see who made the last change, that kind of thing. Um, and I've been using this class wiki for about a year and a half without any problems. And this semester, we had problems. And we discovered in class, we had like 16 or 17 students in there, and I had a document, and it was just a real simple document. Go in, add your picture, add a couple of your favorite links, um, your name, and, and it would be like a roster for the class. So I had mine all out there, and, and a couple students go in and they do it, we're looking at it, that's great. And other students go in and put theirs in, and they're like, wait a minute, what happened to mine? Well, what we discovered is you cannot have too many people on there at once. And I don't know what the number is, but apparently three or more. Um, whenever, if you have two people on at the same time, whoever's on there last, what they do takes precedence over the other one and it wastes it out. So we did this for about 20 minutes, and then they were a little upset. So, you know, I could pretend I knew this was going to happen, but I really didn't. Um, and so we decided this was really not the best way. Uh, we, we stopped doing that, but it was a good lesson. Um, if you were going to make a wiki for your employer as a way to keep track of a project, um, that's a good thing to know. Hey, whoever comes in after me is going to wipe out whatever I just did. That's important. That's you know good to know. Um, consequently, we're not going to be using this wiki next year. We're going to go to something else. Um, but uh, if you go out to the wiki now, it does look a little bit different than those first few slides um, because. And with any wiki, it might change. You know, whatever the students do, I kind of stayed back and let them design it however they wanted. Um, you know, to, I kind of organized it and said, put your articles out here, put your demos here. But some of them, some of them, you know, did it in numbers. Some of them did bullets. Some of them didn't do any of that. So it's all different. So it's a little bit hodgepodge. But that that was okay. That wasn't something I was looking at grading them on. So. Um, again, this is some of the chapter links. They all had to put a certain number of links. And the first one, as you can see, they number them. The other one, not numbered. This one, she divided it by chapters. So they're all a little bit different. Okay. But the point is, they, I mean, they, did, they did learn how to use it. They did learn the benefits of it. Um, so I feel educationally, they did learn from that. And just because things don't work out the way you plan doesn't mean that it's not a good educational uh, situation. They did learn. Um, this is kind of how I feel. So many apps, so little time. Um, anybody else in here get really excited about trying these things out? Yeah, they're a lot of fun. Um, and this website, go2web20.net, it's an awesome website. Um, it's, a, it's a good website for students to start. Um, so when I would say, okay, we're going to do a chapter on communication. I would direct them to this site, and as you can see, get my pointer here. Um, as you can see, you've got a little menu over here. And so, if you wanted to pick a category of of create, and then you wanted to maybe break it down with uh, something that was uh, fun, and maybe something that had to do with a video, it'll it'll um, filter those out and just bring back the apps that match those categories. Okay, or you can just open it wide up and just say, well, let me see everything that you have on share or everything that you have on something else. Now, the numbers here are pretty low, like 19 and in, in, in the 10, 9, 7. These are, this category is just most popular. There's a whole lot more out there. Okay, and so if I'm doing a chapter on communication, I might have them click on the communication tab and see what they could find and then test out one of those apps. Okay. Um, they're changing. They're always changing. Um, any of these look familiar? Yeah. Tried some of these? Yeah. Um, Animoto's a lot of fun. Mint, my students actually use Mint, which surprised me. It's a budgeting, uh, budgeting app. And uh, yeah, I was surprised. 
someone can actually use it. Prezi, absolutely. What do you all talk about? Haven't used that one. Yeah, yeah. haven't used that's just that's a screenshot of the page. Uh, haven't used it. As far as some of the favorites that we've discovered, um, I wish I could get a kickback for every time I told people about this site called LastPass. And I'll show you a screenshot in a minute. This is my ultimate favorite website. It is a password saving vault. And I'll show you a screen saving, uh, screenshot in a minute. Box, Dropbox, both good places to save things. You can sync them to your devices. You can get a lot of, you know, a lot of storage space. Um, Spotify, this was a, a, something that one of the students had discovered was a really great way to stream your music and it didn't take up a lot of bandwidth, which uh, was a good thing if you were doing it at school. So computer services you know, didn't come and, and tell us we were using up all the bandwidth. Um, so that was a pretty good one. Uh, TripAdvisor, anybody ever use that? I love that site. Um, it, it's a great site to go to. Make sure you're not staying in some really bad hotel. Um, good site to use. Um, again, the go-to web, use it. Invisible Hand, anybody use that one? It's a very cool, it's an add-in. You get on your browser. And let's say that I'm gonna be shopping for a particular TV. If I go out and I type in Google, I'm looking for the TV, and I go to a website and I bring up Best Buy. If there's a better deal out there, this little, little menu kind of pops down with a hand and say, hey, you can get a better deal here. Or this is the best deal. Again, I like free. I like a deal, so I really like that site. It's a good one. Um, Prezi, a lot of us have talked about Prezi. That is really neat. And, and one thing I'll say about Prezi, initially, I didn't really like it. It was kind of cumbersome because you had, to, you had to figure out where you wanted your slides to go and the path and everything. And to me, it just seemed a little bit cumbersome to, to learn it. But now, uh, most recently when I tried to use it, it's kind of like PowerPoint. If you want to reorder your slides, you just do it. There's a, a margin on the left side. You just put your slides in order. So you don't have to draw a path and figure out what all the tools are used for. It, it, it's much easier. Um, so I think that that's improved. Uh, Pulled everywhere. Anybody use that? I love that thing. It's, it's real. It's handy. This, it engages the students. Um, it's really neat to show them the results. They have fun with it. They can bring their cell phones to class. You can use it on your online classes. It, it doesn't have to be face to face. Um, so that could be a lot of fun. Uh, some videos. One of my favorites is uh, The Web and Random Acts of Kindness by Jonathan Zittrain. Anybody ever heard that one? Okay, it's, it's really good. Um, I put the YouTube uh, link out there. So often we hear about how social media and, and uh, Facebook and all these sites and just the internet in general and people in general, people are bad, people aren't good, and, and the web is a bad place. We hear that a lot, at least I hear that a lot from some folks. Well, this video, it really looks at it from a different perspective. And it, and it really talks about the many good things that the web offers, and, and it's humorous. He has some really good points comparing hitchhiking to the Craigslist rideshare board. How we won't hitchhike, but we might go out and sign up for you know, somebody on the rideshare board. And he's like, what, uh, you know, killers don't plan ahead? You know, <laughs> what makes that any safer than hitchhiking? Um, and actually, it gives them more time to plan. Um, but, you know, it's just a funny way to, you know, a new perspective, a new way to look at things. Um, and so that's a pretty good video. Um, the machine is us, the machine is using us. Uh, Michael um, West, he was actually the keynote speaker here last year. This was a pretty powerful video. Um, for in-class videos on anything from what is virtual reality to how to use a browser to you know, how, what is a web page, what is a wiki? Common craft videos. Anybody use those? Okay, do you have like a subscription or do you just, you have a subscription, thank you. I do three things still, so you can do a subscription. I'm not sure how much it is. I'm sure it's very reasonable. It's $149 a year for academic grade, and I just call my online classes and they take all the, all the, all the mobile that it, it's really great. Okay, okay, and that's for full college is 100 Something or per person? Okay. You can still get the videos. If you go to commoncraft.com, you'll, you'll go to the site, you'll see the videos, and, and there are more and more that come out all the time. I'm really impressed at how much, you know, how many more he's, he has. Um, if you go to YouTube, you can find the same video on YouTube for free 
Um, you know, I think ultimately they would really like us all to go to the site and to pay. But they're good. And one of the reasons that I like them, they're not flashy. It's a guy, you just see a hand on a, a screen, and it has like a picture of a, you know, a house or a web, and it just kind of pulls things in with his fingers. Really simple. Really breaks it down, so it's really simple. Oh, this is what a blog is. Oh, okay. This is the advantage of using this. And, and students really like it because it is so simple. It's so different from everything else that they're doing, which is, you know, lots of animation and color. Um, so I, I think it he's, has some really good stuff out there. Okay, last pass. I'll go back to that. Um, I don't think it has anything to do with age, but I have a hard time remembering my passwords. Um, with teaching this class, I have tried out hundreds of apps. Um, for every app you want to try, you got to sign in, right? You have to create an account, and you know, I, you're not supposed to use the same passwords. I won't say that I do that, but um, it's hard to remember them. LastPass is, is a wonderful thing. Um, it's the last password you ever have to remember. That's what they say. Um, and, and basically what it is, it is a secure encrypted vault where you can save every website that you go to, whether it's your doctor, um, you know, something like Amazon, something for school, and I have a variety of ca uh, categories on here. Um, you can save your passwords. And you do have to remember the key password that you use to get in and out of the account. Um, they do now have a default in there in case you've forgotten that. And I haven't tried that and I don't. I remember it. I can remember one thing. Um, but you can do it a couple different ways. You can either use it as like a widget on your browser or you can download it as a client on your computer. Either one. Um, you want to be careful if it's a shared computer not to check remember all the time or then everybody's going to have your password. Um, so that you have to be careful about. And you have to make sure that you can log off but you can set it. You can say, you know, if I don't uh, interact with this for so many seconds, you know, log me out, and then I have to log back in again. So you can get up and walk away from your desk. Or you can say, if I close the browser, log me out. Um, there's lots of different ways that you can set it up. I think it works with uh, Firefox, uh, IE, it works with Chrome. Haven't had any problems with it. And just today, I had to use it. Um, and what you see here on the screen, is a sample of my account and the category, that's one of the categories of my classes. And this is the, the account, and then over here, if I want to edit it, I can click on that. If I click on that, it will show me my, you know, my, the site that I'm going to, and there's a little button that says show. You click on show, it will show you the password. And you can click it again so that it, you know, takes it so you don't see it. Um, and so a lot of times, I will, if I'm at somebody else's computer, I'll just bring this up online, I'll go to the vault online, and then look up, well, what's my Dropbox password again? Get my Dropbox password, log out, and go into Dropbox. Does it say user, username as well? Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty slick. Um, I had to kind of, I had to go, we, we recently changed to Active Directory, so I kind of had to get computer services blessing on this, but fortunately I have a good reputation and a good relationship with my computer services folks, and I promised them I wasn't going to use it to steal all the secrets of the college, and they let me download it um, on my machine and actually in my labs. So um, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, saves me a lot of headaches. Um, occasionally, you might get like two accounts out there, so if you need to, uh, you bring up an account and you want to change your password, you can click a button and say, yes, replace the old one. Because I, I, I have like a couple of Yahoo accounts, wait a minute, why do I have so many? And then I look, I, I didn't erase like the last one. Um, one other thing that it can do is it'll do like a form fill, okay? The form that you have to fill out to try out every single app, um, you can set up different, pers you know, different personalities essentially, your work profile, your home profile, <coughs> the button, it'll fill it all in for you, and you don't have to type it. Again, it's free. Okay. There is a LastPass premium, I'm not really sure what all that does, I didn't look at it because it costs, uh, so I just go with the free version. Um, Similu. Um, what does this look like? Kind of Windows 8, doesn't it, right? This has actually been out before Windows. This was out before Windows 8. Um, it's just a different way for students to organize their websites. Um, and this was, it, it did come out, I don't know, maybe three or three years ago. Um, and so students that maybe are not into the bookmarks or they're not into delicious or something like that for storing their bookmarks, this was a kind of a creative way that you could just organize them and, and have them. Um, 
Now with Windows 8, I'm not so sure that this program is really going to stay in business much longer. Maybe it will, I'm not sure, but it, it was a lot of fun. Students had kind of fun with it. Um, and you can share other people's tiles, and it's kind of neat. Kind of like, kind of like a delicious, only with pretty colored squares instead of lists. Okay. Mobile devices, we uh, used a Zoom tablet, we used uh, a couple different iPads, um, a variety of telephones, some laptops, all those different devices we used in the class. Um, I actually have uh, the iPad 1 and then a Zoom tablet that the college has paid for and we use that in the class for students to try out. Um, and I would say that students are not as excited about using them as much as maybe they were initially. And a few more students are starting to have their own tablets, um, which I'm going to show some stuff about that in a minute, how much they're actually using them. So apps versus device, you know, what, which way do we go? Does it matter? Well, I've done a couple surveys because I wanted to find out what they're using, what devices they're using, how they use their devices. Um, you know, a lot of people, they say, hey, I know how to use a computer, and you sit them down and have them do an Excel spreadsheet, and their eyes glass over there, they have no clue. You know, they, they can go to Facebook, and they call that, I can use my computer. So I wanted to see, what do you use your phone for? And looking at all the things that you use your phone for, and then what are the top five things that you use your phone for? What are the top five things that you use your tablet for? And, and have kind of asked them this a couple different times I've surveyed. Um, so in, in 2011, again in 2013, uh, email in 2011 was almost the number one thing that they used their, their phone for. Um, this is the, the phone tasks. Um, now they're kind of reporting that they're not using their phone for email as much. Could that be that they're just not using email? You know, I think that's probably part of it. This is the unscientific survey. Um, so don't quote me on anything here, but this is, these are the kind of results I found. Um, Facebook. Came down a little bit on the cell phone. Did you include texting? I'll get to this. <laughs> um, calling family and friends, which was kind of exciting. They're actually using their phone to call a little bit more now, or at least that's what they're reporting. Um, using their phone for pictures is eh, stayed about even. Um, setting alarms. I just, you know, was really surprised uh, to learn. I don't know. I shouldn't have been surprised a few years ago to realize students do not wear watches. Because I'm kind of a watch goof. I like watches with M&Ms and you know, all kinds of goofy colorful things and kind of collect them and, and they, don't, they don't get into that. They just look at me like I have three heads and just say, no, I have my cell phone. What would I use a watch for? That's redundant. Um, so that's kind of what they, they say they're using it for, not setting alarms as much. But that's five, there's six. What do you think the number one use of the cell phone is? Texting, yeah, not a big surprise. Um, and that's unfortunately gone up. Um, in some respects, what I'm finding is they were using their phones for maybe um, a little bit more uh, different types of things, not just gaming, not just music. Um, those things were on there, listening to music, playing games, um, that was all on there, but it was actually low, relatively low compared to the other things. You know, they're using it to keep track of their budgets. They're using it to keep track of um, dates and when things are due. And a little bit, a little bit more intelligent types of usage of the cell phone. So I thought that was pretty good. Um, now, I just recently did the survey again, and I used my class. I used some of my advisees who are tech majors and, and got the results back. And there was one other category that came up high in the usage of a cell phone. Now, I live in Pennsylvania, and Pennsylvania, we sort of feel we're entitled to at least one snow day a year. This is Harrisburg. We haven't gotten one yet. And the app that they were using was the weather app. So I'm pretty sure they were wondering when we're going to have our next snow day, or our only snow day. Um, normally, that one did not you know, really come to the top, but this one did. I'm wondering when we're going to have it. I think we're not. We're done. Tablet tasks. Um, well, was it the same? It's a little bit different. Um, email, about the same. Um, Facebook, a little bit more now. They're, they're not using it on their phone as much as they're using it on the tablets. And again, I will say that there weren't that many students that actually had a tablet. So the survey results are really small. Um, a couple things that I'm really you know, happy about is the things in red. Um, D2L, which is the course management system we use, or any learning management system, they actually 
actually indicated an increase in using their tablets for education. I thought that was pretty good. Now it's small, but um, I thought that was good. Um, it, we're looking at going to you know ebooks, and students are kind of afraid of that. And so if we see that they're actually thinking about that, that's you know a good thing. They're kind of jumping the hurdle maybe. Um, checking weather, like I said, it wasn't even on the radar the last time, um, but you know we want a snow day, so they were all checking it. Um, e textbooks zero initially. Now I've got 17 percent, which is probably only like three people, but it's, you know 17 percent more than that we had last time that admit they're actually using them for this purpose. Um, surfing the web, which I thought that's pretty interesting. Again, maybe they're not just doing random things out there, they're actually using their computers for purposes to do things like, you know, look up certain things for classes or check the weather or set alarms. So maybe not as much random uh, work. Now in my classes, 16, 18% both times, that's, that's the amount of students that had uh, a tablet of some sort. So I think out of, I don't know, it was like five or six out of 30, um, not that many. Some of them don't even use them in classes. They just kind of use them to play with at home. They don't use them for education purposes. So we still don't have a lot of tablet users at our school yet, but I think it's getting there. Um, they do like to be able to check their assignments on their phone and on their tablets, or check your email and have access to it, but they don't use it as their main workforce. That's still the laptop. And I think, is that kind of how it is for most of us? I've tried. I've really tried to use my iPad for like everything. No, I gray hairs because I've tried so hard. I love my laptop. Um, that's how I can be more productive. It might, will it change? Yeah, it's very likely it will change. So some of the lessons that I learned, okay, wiki spaces cannot be edited by more than one person at a time. I learned that um, all teams are not created equal. We all know that. Apps go away and sites change. That was a, a lesson that they learned, especially you know right before finals week. Um, why doesn't it work? Sometimes you really just can't explain. Um, but the biggest lesson I learned was wiki spaces cannot be edited by more than one person at a time. Um, that was a very frustrating experience. And I lost a lot of good content as well. I went back in as an administrator and tried to bring a lot of it back, but it was it was like too many undoes ago to bring it back. So I, I couldn't bring it all back. Um, this is something I think students would like to be true. I don't know if you can see that. So your, your Facebook numbers are down again. We're gonna have to let you go if you don't respond to some pending friend requests. I mean, at least update your status daily. It's really simple. The time you spend on Facebook is time and well spent at work. <laughs> if only. Okay. Here's my contact information. This is my assistant, Mango. Uh, and this is my, my dog's Xbox. Get it? Xbox? Was it Cherry Xbox? She loves boxes. So here's my, some of my contact information. The classroom wiki, that wiki will stay out there, um, but I'm probably going to be moving to another one for the, for the next year, but I'm not going to delete that one at least for now. Um, and then some other links if you want to actually get the presentation. Um, contact me, send me an email. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, any questions? We have a couple minutes. It's supposed to be through Sunday, but it's available right now if you go to those links. Okay, and second question, please. Um, what book do you use? Um, Mark Frydenberg's uh, computer applications and mobile technology. Pretty good book, and, and I heard him say yesterday that he just updated a new version. Um, so yeah, good book. Lots of resources. Who took these classes and what programs you study with these two courses? Well, you know, I try to get a variety of students in there without much success. Um, mainly who took it were computer students, like CIS majors. I had some web majors. Um, I had a few undecided students. Um, some of my previous students just took it because they wanted to take a class again. Um, so mostly the computer folks. A couple business students. But I didn't have a lot of luck just getting educators or you know teaching students or transfer students. Not so much. So if you have any ideas on how to expand it, um, we now actually have classes required in our administrative office management program, which is sort of the office office management program. We put that in there. I'm wondering if you use any disclaimers or anything on your syllabus, especially particularly for like Not really. I haven't had that come up. Uh, you know, 
I, I knew the zombie people weren't actually going to run. Uh, so, <laughs> no, I, but that's a good point. Maybe I should put on there, you know, try your app at your own risk. Um, not responsible for the outcome. Get your own health insurance. 